Hello, beautiful people. Today is part two to my previous video, which was on long COVID. The idea is I wanted to cover COVID as a whole. So of course I had to talk about COVID, the infection itself, and the solution of choice, which is the vaccines, and all of their potential long-term side effects. I wanted to actually go over this for a very long time, but I'm not gonna lie, I was a little bit worried to do so because it feels like doctors are more than welcome to talk about the consequences of COVID, both short-term and long-term, but as soon as you bring up vaccines, the conversation gets shut down. And really, I wanna look at this like any therapy, whether it be pharmaceutical, herbal, lifestyle, all of them have their pros and cons. So it's not about demonizing this particular therapy, but having an open discussion about realistically, what are some of the long-term side effects that you could potentially get using the COVID vaccines? So I'm gonna dive into the science behind why some of you may have never felt well since. And this could be related back to the previous video. So the previous video has the science behind long COVID, what's driving long COVID, and the symptoms. And I will say the symptoms are very similar. The long COVID symptoms and the post-vaccine reaction symptoms can look very similar. So I do encourage you all to go back and watch part one if you haven't already. But again, this one is going to be dedicated to just the vaccine why some of you may get long-term side effects from the vaccine and what is the mechanism behind that. So I'm not gonna waste any more of your time with the intro, but first just briefly let me introduce myself and then we're gonna jump into it. So my name is Dr. Robin Lewis. I'm a naturopathic physician practicing in Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada, and let's talk about COVID vaccines. Okay, so as I mentioned earlier, the symptoms of long COVID and post-COVID vaccine reactions can look very similar. Even the naming is very similar. So now they're starting to refer to these things as long post-COVID vaccination syndrome, which is referring to onset of symptoms right after getting the vaccines that persist for longer than four weeks very similar to long COVID. It's symptoms that persist longer than four weeks, a couple months, and for some unlucky individuals, years. Now, it's interesting that they have overlapping symptoms because one of the mechanisms that I found in the literature behind both reactions is the same, and that's something called molecular mimicry, which I did mention in part one, but I will reiterate here. So the concept is there's something about the virus in the case of COVID, or here, there's something about the adjuvants used in the vaccine that looks similar to your tissues. Now your immune system then gets confused and it thinks it's clearing that part of the vaccine out of the system when really it's attacking your own tissue. So this is not a new concept at all. You see this with a lot of different vaccines, breast implants, medical devices, they all fall under the category of adjuvant-induced autoimmune syndrome, or, I, or ASIA for short. And so, for example, you'll see this with breast implants, where the body starts getting confused and it starts attacking your own tissue, aka an autoimmune condition, where you're attacking yourself instead of a foreign invader because something is in there inside your body confusing it. In the case of breast implants, it's the silicone inside the breast implants that is confusing the immune system. Now, similar to things like breast implants or other medical devices, not everyone gets this, but it is a very well-known mechanism that you see with a lot of vaccines. So it's not surprising that yes, the COVID vaccine also potentially can cause this kind of reaction, thus giving you, at least temporarily, an autoimmune attack of your own body. And where it attacks is nonspecific. There are a lot of different autoimmune conditions and depending which one you have, you will present differently because it depends on what your body's attacking. If it's attacking your thyroid, you're gonna see problems with energy and metabolism. If it's attacking your joints, you're gonna see joint pain, things like that. Now, one of the more COVID specific reactions that is very well documented 
is the clotting risk associated with the AstraZeneca vaccines. So in this case, the AstraZeneca vaccines have been well documented. This one was very openly discussed to increase clot risk in some individuals. The reason behind that is an autoimmune attack of a part of our platelets that will increase your ability to clot. The specific name for this, and now I'm going to read it off because it's a little bit mouthy, is vaccine-induced immune thrombotic thrombocytopenia. <laughs> so that's an example of one autoimmune condition that is induced by the AstraZeneca vaccine. Now, again, this is not a very common reaction, but this is the mechanism behind why all of a sudden some of these individuals had a higher clotting risk. Now, again, this could be any type of autoimmune condition that is triggered. And so it's just a matter of whether or not you have the genes or the right situation in order to develop an autoimmune condition. But if you're starting to get vaccine reactions, that's the first place I would look is can we measure antibodies against some of these common autoimmune conditions? Can we go down that rabbit hole in order to investigate why you feel the way that you feel? Now, there's another overarching theme that I wanted to cover in today's video. I will say the more you dig into this, the more complex it gets. But one overarching theme that I did notice is a lot of the people who don't feel well after the vaccines and a lot of the mechanisms trying to explain why some people feel unwell actually has to do with over vaccinating people. So it's usually not the first time someone will get the vaccine, but maybe the second or the third. And now let me explain why this could be the case. If we were to put it into simple terms, if you just keep giving vaccinations and vaccinations and vaccinations and vaccinations, you will overwhelm and overstimulate the immune system. This is very well documented in animal studies that if you give too much, of a vaccine and you keep giving it, it will overwhelm the immune system. And an overwhelmed immune system is chaotic and it's not doing what it should be doing. So this can lead to uncontrolled inflammation and autoimmune conditions. And so for some people, it might just be too much too often sort of thing. This is not unique to the mRNA vaccines or any of the COVID vaccines. You can see this with any type of vaccination, if you give too much too often, you can overwhelm someone's immune system. Now, if we look specifically at some of the COVID vaccine studies, they have seen that mRNA vaccines, especially after the second and the third, can really increase something called IgG4, which is a type of immunoglobulin. Now, this is going to get a little technical, so stick with me. It does make sense in the long run. So yes, this is very well documented that after the second and the third, your immunoglobulin IgG4 will go up. Now, this is an interesting one because it's not the intended purpose of the vaccine. They are trying to increase other immunoglobulins so that you can more easily fight that COVID infection the second time around. But IG4 or IgG4 usually is not a part of that process. And actually, in some studies, they have shown that IgG4 actually has a bit of a protective quality to it. So you only really see that particular immunoglobulin, which generally doesn't have a huge role, um, that one will increase when you've had prolonged exposure to, let's say, an allergen, for example. It's trying to counteract the other immunoglobulins to calm the inflammation. So you're not just perpetually inflamed by that allergen. So in that context, it's protective. However, emerging evidence points to this actually not being protective in the context of the COVID vaccines it's actually being shown to be more of a sign of immune tolerance, meaning you're almost desensitized to the spike protein, to the COVID virus itself, which means the next time around that it comes, 
your immune system won't be able to mount a very good response because it's being dampened. It's being kind of turned off again because it's being overstimulated. And eventually in this context, it's actually resulting in a less aggressive response to when you do see COVID the next time. So this is really interesting because it suggests that you're actually worse off because of this. If you have the elevated IgG4 that is very commonly associated with multiple rounds of vaccination, it's not a good sign for the health of your immune system and it's not a good sign for your future ability to respond to that virus. Now it has been well known for a very long time that these vaccines do not prevent you from getting COVID again. They claim to make it less bad the next time you get COVID if you don't get this reaction. So if you do get this reaction, what that means is your body's actually more vulnerable the next time it sees COVID and therefore you are more likely to get long COVID the next time you see COVID. If you remember from part one, this is anything that suppresses your immune system. And I'm not talking about true immune suppression in the like HIV context, but say your immune system is suboptimal because of the previous vaccines. You see COVID again, now you are more likely to develop long COVID. That is one of the risk factors is anything that dampens your immune response, makes it more likely that that virus is really gonna take a hold and create some long-term side effects. And so this is really the full circle moment. It's not just about COVID. It's not just about the COVID vaccine. Sometimes it's about both of them working together, or maybe it's not just about the COVID vaccine. Maybe it's the fact that you did way too many vaccines at the same time. All of these things need to be taken into context because the overarching theme, again, is just an overwhelmed immune system that has gotten out of control, leading to either uncontrolled inflammation, which can look like a whole variety of different symptoms, or worst case scenario, an autoimmune situation where now your immune system is actually attacking you. This doesn't always mean long term, but these are some of the things that are across the board. Now, I've only touched on a couple of the points that I feel like there's really good science behind. I saw it time and time again where they were talking about similar things along these sort of pathways. It, are there potentially more things that are contributing to why some people do not tolerate the vaccines very well? quite possibly, but at least these ones I felt like had really good science behind them and made a lot of sense for the people that I've seen in my office because a lot of them who do have these more long-term side effects were focusing on inflammation, were focusing on calming the immune system and things like that. And unfortunately, a dysfunctional immune system and inflammation can show up different in different people. So that's really where part one goes over all of the different symptoms that can affect all of the different systems. Now cleaning up that inflammation, restoring balance to the immune system is a lot easier said than done. And an individualized approach should be taken because it can affect different systems and different people depending on the other things going on in your health. But I just wanted to help provide some context for those of you who are desperately searching for answers. These are some of the mechanisms that I have found in the research. If you have found any additional information, please provide it below. I really feel passionately that this should be an open discussion. This isn't meant to be uh, an opinion of how I feel about the vaccines, how I feel about anything politicized around the vaccines but it's really just to keep the discussion open and hopefully provide some information that you may have previously found a bit challenging to find. All right, so I'm gonna wrap up there. Thank you guys again for listening. Your comments, your experiences, all of these things are very much welcomed in the chat below. And I look forward to seeing you hopefully at the next video.